All right. What's up, everybody? We're back for another Biz Buzz Live. Chris moves on. Uh, today, we're, we got an important conversation. For those of you that don't know, it's Life Insurance Awareness Month. Uh, it's Life Insurance Awareness Month, and we are talking about all things life insurance. So today, since we're talking this cash flow side of Biz Buzz Live, well, we figured let's talk about what's going on in the insurance space. Let's talk about what it's like uh, to be in the insurance industry. Stick around for today's combo. Yes, yes, that's right, y'all. We're back for another Biz Buzz Live. Again, I'm your host, Chris Muzan, your financial coach. Uh, get a chance to talk all things money with you. Feel free to follow me on any of these other platforms that are out there right now. We're live on LinkedIn and YouTube, uh, but we're all over. Uh, this is a special conversation, especially for this month, the month of September. We're diving into a lot of the insurance financial services world feel like it made, made sense uh, for us to be able to dive in here and kind of have this conversation with you. And because of that, uh, it says we're having some trouble streaming. Is that the case? Can you guys see me on LinkedIn? I'm curious. Drop something. Drop a note. Drop a, drop a tab or something if you can see me over here on LinkedIn. If you can't, let me know. Because otherwise... I'll stop the stream and we'll start it again. But either way, let's dive in. Uh, let me just double check here. Make sure that we actually are live on LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys can see me. Drop a note if you can see me. Drop a hey. Drop a comment. Drop anything. Let me know. Yeah, it says we're live. All right, cool. We're going to keep rocking and rolling, y'all. Sometimes technology is funny. Sometimes technology is funny. But anyway, uh, for the month of September, it's Life Insurance Awareness Month. So we're diving in to really have the conversations uh, around all things insurance. And since Biz Buzz Live, we're talking about cash flow and um, how people just bring in more income. We figured, why not talk about the industry that we work in? Right, the industry that has treated us very well and that we continue to be able to grow in, why not share a little bit of that with, with you guys? So we want to be able to talk a little bit about it. Again, as always, the reason why we have these conversations around industry, uh, around um, uh, cash flow uh, is because inevitably, inevitably, when we start having these financial conversations and we get to the place where we're talking about uh, savings, debt, retirement, investments, all the things, uh, we ultimately get back to a place of, well, how do we make money? How do we bring in income in order to do those things? Cash flow is one of the uh, primary generators for you being able to control the rest of your financial life. So that's why we talk about it. Uh, my wife and I have been here in the financial services industry, specifically in the insurance space, uh, for the past 11 years now. Um, this was not our background. This was not what we set out to do in college. My wife has a couple master's degrees in uh, healthcare administration and adult education and training. And she went to school for business and then she was an entrepreneur um, dealing in business with her brother. And we never thought the financial space was something that we even looked at or we even thought about uh, for myself. Some of you already know, right? I used to be a restaurant manager uh, I actually did the culinary side of things coming out of school. I, did, you know, uh, I got an associate's in culinary arts and a bachelor's in food service management. I worked my way up in the industry and was everything in the restaurant space that you might know, line cook, prep cook, uh, ran a gourmet cafeteria as you know one of the, the chefs at the time, I was relatively young. Then I jumped front of the house, uh, which is serving, bartending, making my way into management, uh, realized I was very personable and that I liked people and that people liked me. Uh, and that was just the gift that God gave me. And I explored it over time. 
and it led me into restaurant management. I get into the management space and then I make a career of it for a few years. And then I realize very quickly, I realize that this isn't going to really get me and my family to where we want to go. A lot of people don't have that realization, right? A lot of people don't stop and just say, okay, uh, is this really going to help me get to where I want to be in life? Sometimes we're like, well, because I went to school, because I got this degree, because this is where I spent my money and I went in debt for, I'm going to keep pursuing this path. Even get me to my ultimate goals in life. Sometimes we just kind of stay the course. It's the reason some people stay in bad relationships for a long time too also, right? But being able to change your mind, being able to make an educated decision about what is going to be best for your future is a superpower. It's something that I, I encourage and recommend everyone really try out. Don't get so stuck into your pattern, into your path for a very, very long time. Uh, if you know it's not taking you to where you want to be. So that's what I did. I just happened to, my wife and I happened to have this conversation a bit earlier in life. Uh, we were in our early 20s, maybe mid 20s, when we started to talk about, hey, is this really all life is cracked up to be? Are we supposed to work at these jobs? Are we supposed to be working 90 hours a week? Are we, right, we make okay money, but we don't really have a life. Um, and we just had these conversations very early. And so that got us on the path of thinking, well, what can we go do? Right? What is out there? What are the options? And we just knew having a job wasn't going to be the option. I knew that from my side. My wife was more self-employed, but I just knew from my side, like having a job wasn't for me um, specifically for a couple of reasons. One, uh, no matter what the work is that you do, you get paid uh, kind of the same. One of the realizations I remember having was uh, I was, you know, one of the one of the better managers in, in in the restaurant, one of the go to managers, the staff like me, right? A lot of guests like me, those those types of things was punctual. I was on time. I you know, tried to do the right thing for, for people, stayed late when I needed to, showed up early when I needed to, was really a team player. And then I started to realize uh, the salary that I was making, you know, it was $52,000 or something like that, $55,000. Then I realized that there were other managers that I worked with that were less talented than me, that worked less hard right, than I did, was not as good as I was, and they were making more money than me. Right there, I was like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Like, I understand they might have had some tenure or they might have come in at a higher pay rate because they're a little bit older or whatever the case is. And right now, I'm a little bit older and wiser and I understand corporate America, right? You kind of pay the young guy or the young person, they'll, they'll accept a lot less than the person that maybe came from other places or this is their fourth restaurant. They've been a manager, they get paid more. But they weren't better at their job. They didn't work harder. They didn't, uh, they weren't more talented. And after a while, I started to realize like, that's not fair. Like, that's not how I want to play. And so I remember after a while, kind of having one of those annual reviews or one of those, you know, performance meetings that you guys in corporate America love to do. I had, I had one of those things. <laughs> and uh, what, what eventually happened was I was sitting down, you know, with the area director and those types of things. And straight A's across the performance review, right? Straight A's across the performance review. Uh, and so I wind up asking for a raise as most people would. If you say, hey, everything's stellar and everything's great and all those things. And then all of a sudden they're like, um, as we're sitting at that table, they tell me, oh, Chris, you're, you're kind of capped off at where you're at. Like you're at the highest salary for your level of management you know, like here with the company. And that again, took me back. I was like, huh, I'm doing all the work here. I'm the go-to guy. I'm not the number one, right? I still have a boss, right? I still have somebody that kind of oversees, but I do a lot of stuff here. And for you to tell me, and I wasn't asking for a major raise. I was asking for like maybe another $3,000, $4,000. What's that come out to? An extra after taxes, an extra $100 on a check, an extra $150 per check. It's not a lot. But I remember them saying I was capped off and that I couldn't make that money. Like they couldn't give me a raise. I was like, well, what do I have to do to do it? And then some of you might know this. That's when all like the corporate politics and all the corporate lingo comes out. It's like, oh, you know, 
if this person leaves and, you know, you get a good review on this and we can use you in these areas and maybe you can, uh, you know, help us with this project or help us with this, then, you know, you would be next in line and we would consider all of these kind of vague things of like all the more work that I had to do for this little bit of a, of a raise. And right at that moment, I realized this, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. Having a job, having to ask another man for more money um, and they could say no, like that just, that just wasn't for me. No, again, some people don't look at it like that, but I did. And I was only maybe 23, 24 years old when I had that conversation. So right from there, I knew I needed something different. We never thought it would be the financial services space, though. Happened to uh, run across a guy, really good friend now, that um, introduced me to the industry. He basically said, hey, man, like if you've never looked into financial services, if you've never looked into the insurance space, uh, this might be it. It's just another people business. That's what he said. I always thought that you had to be good at math, which I, I, I kind of am, but I don't. I don't really practice it anymore. Uh, I always thought you had to like kind of know numbers and you know the technical things of finance, but in the insurance space specifically, you really don't need any of those things. You just need to have, to have great people skills. It's a people business. At the end of the day, we're serving people, not about the numbers, not about the plans. Those things you learn, just like you learn any career. But if you have a heart to serve people, and if you have a heart to be able to um, want to see people improve and do the right thing for people, then it could be an industry for you. And that's what he said. And I was like, okay, well, I'll think about that. He didn't know that I had already had this conversation at my job and with my wife that like, I don't want to be at this job anymore. So it was just the right timing. We got a chance to see and look at the industry. And right away, I realized uh, it was going to be something that I could do. It was going to be something I could do. Did I think I'd be here for 11 years? Maybe not. I didn't actually know if this would be the thing, but I knew I was willing to give it a shot. And that's a message for all of you that are, again, in the process of switching a career or thinking about switching a career, maybe even in the process of just taking on a second job or right, a side business. You might not know where it goes, but you got to try, right? You got to open it up. You got to try to push yourself, put yourself in that position where you can experience something new. And so that's what I did. Lo and behold, we got into the, the insurance space. We got licensed in the insurance space, life and health, and off to the races, off to the races. The first few years are always tough because, uh, especially in the financial services space, especially in the insurance space, a lot of times you're just, you're green, right? Like you don't really know anything. You don't really know how to make phone calls. I didn't come from a sales background outside of being a right being being a server where i guess you're selling food or selling happiness to people i don't know uh, but outside of that never had like any sales jobs or anything like that so in the first few years it's difficult because you're learning new language you're learning an industry you're learning sales you're learning marketing what i didn't necessarily have to learn was how to deal with people Right? There were some frustrating things, but I didn't have to learn how to deal with people. I understood inherently if you're good to people, if you're nice to people, if you're caring and right, you care about other people's well-being, then ultimately good things happen. Right? Uh, treat others as you want to be treated. That's a very basic golden rule. So once I learned that and understood that, then the rest of it was just kind of learning the, the industry. So the industry can be a little tough in a few different ways. Right. One, most people don't like talking about insurance, especially life insurance. Right. Especially life insurance. It's kind of hard to get in front of people when it comes to the life insurance space. It's hard to sit down with people and uh, get them to think about what the future holds for them and their family in case they were not here. Sometimes that's an uncomfortable conversation. Some people l like the conversation because they need the security. Right. But many people don't. And it's hard to set time with people. It's hard to sit down with them. It's right. It's hard to kind of come in and have these conversations. Uh, but we did it anyway. We fought through it. We got better. We learned. So once we learned how to do it, and once we got into the space where we're like, okay, now we understand this a bit, a, a, a bit more. Then it was uh, again. We were able to build our business. We were able to push ourselves a little bit more in our business and make some good things happen. So if any of you have ever been approached or thought about getting into the insurance space, here's just some of the benefits, right? Just think of some of the benefits. I just always want to share these with people 
because you don't always know. Uh, the insurance world, um, specifically life and health, right? Now, there's also the what they call the PNC side, right? Property and casualty. Those are the people that sell you car insurance, homeowner's insurance, pet insurance, business insurance, general liability type things. Uh, those are good. That's your, you know, your big firms are all state and state farms and farmers and those types of places, Geico, all those places, they're, they're good. Uh, and it's often easier in that side of the insurance space. It's easier there because everyone needs those things. We know people need life insurance, but really like you have to have car insurance. Like you, you can't really drive your car uninsured motorist, obviously, right? But like, you can't really drive your car without car insurance. When you buy that home, like, it just makes sense to have homeowner's insurance. If you, right, have a, a FHA loan, right, you have to get some type of insurance on it. So um, these are the, th the reason why PNC um, agencies do well and PNC agents might do well because there's just a ton of leads and things that come in. But the downside of the PNC side is they don't get paid the big, big bucks. They get paid the small bucks. Lots of right residual, lots of small money coming in, but it's still the small bucks, right? When you come over to the the life and health side of things, where we can do life insurance, disability insurance, long term care coverage, we can also do fixed annuities, fixed indexed annuities, which is more on the retirement side of things. When excuse me, when you can do all of those things, that's where the big money is. You might not know this, but the financial services industry is the highest paid industry in the world. Financial services, whether you're talking insurance, whether you're talking wealth management, hedge funds, financial advising, financial planning, like anything. When you deal with money, you make money. It's the way it goes. When you deal with money, when you help people with their money, when you help people transfer money, you make money. Banking, all the stuff. This is, this is where all the money is. It beats out real estate and beats out retail, which are the next two leading industries retail and real estate, but financial services completely wipes them away. So specifically in the insurance space, the life and health side is where you can make a ton more money than the PNC side, but it's just harder. It's harder to get in front of people. It's harder to have the conversation. There's a little bit more knowledge you need. There's a little bit more licensing and continuing education and those types of things that you need. But anything that's hard, ladies and gentlemen, is normally worth it, right? If it's hard, it's, it's going to be worth it. If it's really worth it, it's definitely not going to be easy for you. So that's why, you know, people make good money in this industry. Now, talk to about another one of the benefits. I mentioned it. This is on all of the insurance side. There's residual income, renewal income. Some of you might not know this, but if you're if you get sold a car insurance policy, right? Somebody sells you car insurance, you uh, what's it? You called Geico, say 15, 15 minutes for $50 or whatever the saying is for Geico. Uh, they saved you some money and you only talk to the people for 10, 15 minutes. Normally you get a six month policy. Some people offer a 12 month, but you get a six month policy. Did you know that that agent that helped you get that car insurance policy every year that you renew the policy? It just automatically renews, right? They send you, hey, your policies are for renewal. You just click it. You just keep paying it. It just keeps renewing. Every time that renews, that agent gets paid again. Did you know that? That in the insurance space, that's called renewal income. You can do the work one time and then continue to, every time it renews, get paid for that work. I know you haven't talked to your car insurance agent in a very long time, if ever, <laughs> after the first time they sold you that policy. But imagine they're still getting paid because you've had the same car insurance for five years now. So they've gotten 10 different commission checks every six months. They get another commission check just off of you and your renewal of that policy. Now, imagine they have 100 clients. That's a benefit of the insurance industry. So many people look for residual income, renewal income. Well, you got to be in the right industries in order to get that. That means you do the work one time and get paid for it forever. We have the same thing on the life insurance side of things. We get paid upfront for the work that we do 
And then every year that the client keeps their life insurance policy, we get a renewal commission from that. So by design, our industry is meant for your income to grow. If you do it properly and you stick it out long term, by design, your income will grow. Year one, you get paid for all of year one clients. Then let's say you come back year two and get another 30 clients. Well, you get paid on year two, right? The, the first year for them, but you also are getting paid a renewal for the people that stuck around from year one. Then year three comes, you get some more clients. You get fully paid on them. Now you're getting uh, re renewal income from year one clients, year two clients, and now year three. Year four, year five, you can understand how this continues to build. This is why people that have big books of business in the insurance space, they it's work that they did a while back and they don't have to worry about doing that work again. Now, good agents will follow up and call and make sure that, you know, policies don't need updating or things change. So there's still work. But most people don't have that type of business setup. Most people, you have to do the work every time. There's no renewal, residual income coming in. You have to sell the one thing and then you got to sell another one, like real estate. There's no renewal income when you are on the sales side of real estate. When you are a real estate agent, you have to sell a house and then nothing else comes from that house except for maybe a referral. Then you got to go sell another house and you got to do that forever. And the work that you did 25 years ago, the work that you did 10 years ago, the work that you did seven years ago, doesn't continue to pay you. So that's one of the benefits of being in the insurance space, in the, in the, insu in, in the life insurance space, but the insurance space total, right? Another benefit, another benefit to being in the insurance space uh, is that you get a first class financial education. By, by being around the money, you start to learn money. Why? Because you sit down with clients, people ask questions, you can talk to carriers and companies so that they can tell you the ins and outs of how things work. Now you have a firsthand knowledge around money, around finance, around insurance, around the things that your family may need down the line. So that's a benefit. What's it like to be in an industry where you can take life skills away or actual pertinent knowledge that's going to help you move forward? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So those are definitely some benefits. There's lots of money to be made here. There's a renewal income, residual income that comes with it, which is awesome. There's also uh, other ways, right, for you to be able to diversify your income within the insurance space. Because again, we have many different products. So whether you chose to do PNC and sell car insurance and then sell them life insurance and then come back and get them an annuity. industry with you know one or two different licenses and you have now multiple streams of income inside of one business inside of one industry multiple streams of income multiple different var uh, variables that you can uh, make make income from in one place you don't have to be in real estate and have a side business and have a t-shirt company and do tutoring on the side and drive uber and do insurance like you don't have to do multiple things you can have one business in the insurance space and then after you start learning it you can diversify and say okay let's get into the annuity space let's get into the long-term care space let's get into the, the pnc side let's help someone with business insurance let's help get executive bonus plans for people we're going to be talking about that later this month but either way, there's so many different ways. So again, lots of benefits to being in the, in the insurance industry. What's the downside? One, it's a hard industry. It's a hard industry. I'll just be honest. Most people don't cut it. Most people give up after a year. Most people, I, I spoke to someone, and, and this is very true, right? It's really hard to get jazzed up and fired up about life insurance. It's really hard to get excited about insurance. I'll just be honest with you. No one's really excited about it. That's the key. Like no one's excited about insurance. But again, your life in the cash flow, like your ability to bring in income doesn't mean that every is meaningful and fulfilling. That's what it needs to be. If you do fulfilling work, if you do meaningful work, that over time is the emotion that continues to carry. 
I'll be honest, I've been here. It's not exciting. It's not like, oh, every day I, I'm fired up. I can't wait to make these phone calls and talk to people. It's not like that. But it's meaningful. It's rewarding. When you're the person that's able to help someone secure their family's financial future. When, right, we've been in the industry long enough, my wife and I, that we've given death benefits, right? Our clients have passed away. We've helped them. their check, make sure that their funds get liquidated properly, all of that to the family. We've been there. That is meaningful work. I don't know if you've ever experienced the, the ability to, when someone's in despair, when someone is grieving, to be able to give them a couple hundred thousand dollars f along with right any of the things that um, we were protecting for them, annuities, those types of things, and be able to just we can't bring back that person there's always going to be the emotional loss but they man that's a great feeling it's a great feeling to have that like you were the person that did that you made that phone call you sat down with them you educated them you put that policy in place and then they needed it that family actually needed you it's a big deal it's a big deal right meaningful. It's meaningful. And that's a huge benefit to being here is that it's meaningful. Another downside is just that there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people that um, are undereducated. There's a lot of people that are in the industry that think they know. There's a lot of people that uh, talk bad or talk differently, talk down about certain products and certain things. And that's out there. But that's meaningful. There's always going to be opposition, people that oppose what you're doing. And that's okay. Doesn't mean you're not doing the right thing, right? So definitely more upsides than downsides. I will tell you that every industry has a little bit of downsides, but in our industry, specifically the life insurance industry, long-term care, disability, the, meaning, the meaningful nature of you being able to help someone actually put a plan in place that protects their family whenever things may happen to them, man, there's no better feeling. So that's why we're here. If you want to take a, a deeper look into it, again, the platform that we use allows you to be part-time. So you do not have to quit your job, your full-time job that brings you income. This is something we can start you off part-time and just teach you the industry. Obviously there is licensing that is required. So you need to have, again, clean background and right? You haven't filed bankruptcy and right all these types of things because we're helping other people with their money, helping other people get protected. At the end of the day, if you are a people person, if you are good with people, you come from sales, hospitality, real estate, anything where you've dealt with people, customer service, anything, this may be an industry for you. We're looking for people and we're headed in the direction of one of the greatest wealth transfers in history just because the boomers and older generations are now passing down more money and the insurance world is right in the middle of it getting people protected making sure that money is going to places free the link is down there feel free to uh click the link if you want some more information or just shoot me a message more than happy to have a conversation with you guys but this entire month it's life insurance awareness month it's Life Insurance Awareness Month, so we're going to be talking about all things. Find us on all the other platforms because we're going to be specifically talking about insurance and right some of the, the pros and cons and uh, different types and different policies and all of the different things that are out there. So whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on uh, TikTok or here on LinkedIn or YouTube, wherever you are, you can find us this month talking about insurance. We also want you to know that if you are looking for additional income, you're looking to do something meaningful with your life, maybe your work has not been meaningful, it's just been paying you a check. If you're looking to do something meaningful, look into this industry uh, and we're more than happy to help guide you down that path, all right? Um, we're not gonna be here next week. We're gonna take off next week uh, for Biz Buzz. I have a commitment. right for a good cause uh so i won't be able to do it 
But either way, we'll be coming right back the following Friday to talk more about the insurance industry. So have some of your questions prepared. Feel free to check us out on any of the other channels, any of the other platforms uh, this month for Life Insurance Awareness Month. We'll catch you guys soon. Next time, take care.